Hello students, welcome to this lecture today. Today we shall be looking at lighting techniques in a, 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 in a production. Uh, today uh, we shall be looking at lighting in, in general and uh, I hope that you shall enjoy. Welcome. So I have my assistant and uh, my gaffer can uh, assist us in uh, switching off the lights so that we can start the demonstration so that you also get to appreciate uh, the importance of lighting in uh, any given production. So today I have uh, my subject and uh, I shall be using my subject to demonstrate uh, on uh, the lighting techniques that you can employ in any production uh, that involves recording using the camera. You will also appreciate the fact that we have the primary function of lighting which is providing the required illumination on our subject. That the camera cannot operate uh, without, uh, without light because uh, camera work is all about writing with light or drawing using light. So the picture, picture formation is only possible when we have uh, uh, illumination. As you can see now on your screen, all that you see is uh, uh, a dark image and uh, this is because uh, we don't have uh, uh, the required illumination. So let's first appreciate the fact that uh, lighting uh, or the, the primary function of lighting is to provide that necessary illumination on our subject uh, that allows for picture formation or image formation. Uh, if uh, my director can uh, show us the, the multi-screen multi that shows all the images on the screen. On the lower end, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, on, the, on the lower right-hand corner, you have uh, something that appears like a graph there with the initials WFM. If you can see that, that shows the levels of exposure. WFM in full is waveform monitor. Waveform monitor uh, assists you to know whether you have the right exposure on uh, your camera. So in this case, you can actually see that the level for, uh, on that waveform monitor is too low. There is something that appears to be like a moving graph. There is a histogram somewhere. So, uh, but because we have a little light in this set, uh, that graph uh, is very low. But as we move along, you will see that uh, once we start uh, illuminating our set, that graph will come up and it will be a good indicator to show you that actually we have uh, 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 enough light that is required uh, in uh, this particular set. But at the moment, just take note that it's very low. We have uh, little light. I think we, uh, I have a uh, there's more amount of light and that's why you have that. Otherwise, if you are in total darkness, then it will just be at level zero because that will be black and black is at zero. So as we, as we introduce the lights, you will see that the graph will keep on rising as it moves towards uh, white. So in this case, we have different types of lights. We have uh, the backlight. We have the key, uh, of course, we start with the key light. We have the key light, we have the backlight, and we have the fill light. Now, we have already discussed the importance of this and the purpose that each of these uh, 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 light, lighting uh, uh, provides. So, for the key light is to provide the primary illumination that we require. For the backlight, uh, it's to try and uh, separate our subject from the background and also create the 3D, uh, 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 3D feature in uh, our picture. Uh, then for the field light, we introduce the field light, of course for the different purposes, but uh, 
primarily uh, to try and kill the shadow or the shadows that uh, that are created by the key light. Remember, the key light is uh, because it's the primary uh, uh, light that provides the illumination. Uh, you find that uh, it might cast some uh, sharp shadows. So to try and uh, get rid of the shadows, we then use the fill light. So uh, for this uh, for, 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 for this uh, demonstration, we shall start by uh, uh, bringing up the key light. So we can uh, switch on uh, the key light. My gaffer, please. So. As you can see, uh, already there is that primary illumination from the key light. So the key light is placed right in front of the subject. This is the key light placed right in front of the subject and it provides that uh, direct uh, uh, light on our subject and it has provided that illumination. And as you can see, even on the screen, we have... Uh, 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 we can actually now see our subject. But of course, uh, we'll keep on uh, 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 introducing the other, uh, the other lights and uh, you'll get to see how it goes. So again, you can see that uh, at the back here, we have a shadow. This shadow has been created by the key light. So as we said, the key light will provide the primary illumination but still cast some shadow at the back. So in this case, we had uh, even uh, talked about how do we try and, elim and, uh, uh, and uh, eliminate even the shadows. Uh, we say that you can actually even have the key light maybe from uh, an angle above, okay, so that the shadow that is cast is cast on the floor, on the floor rather than on the background. So. Uh, all those are techniques. So you, you will find that uh, uh, as uh, you uh, interact with the lights, you'll be uh, having, or you'll have to keep on shifting the lights until you have the proper illumination, uh, and also try to get rid of the of the shadows. So always take note of the key light, and that is the key light. Uh, next we can uh, introduce the backlight so that you get to see uh, what it's all about. So the backlight is here. Here we are. So this will be the backlight. And I will want you to observe as we switch on uh, the backlight, what happens. You'll find that uh, even the look of our subject will appear to be a little bit dramatic. We'll add some drama in it. In that uh, the uh, the backlight will light the background here, right behind our subject, and it will also help in separating or creating this space between our subject and the background. Because at the moment, uh, our subject appears to be part of the background, uh, save for maybe the shadow. So uh, with the backlight, it is going to help in... Uh, uh, in doing so. So uh, we can uh, now introduce our backlight. So uh, my assistant, please, can you switch on the backlight? Now you can see that there is a separation between our subject that, uh, and, uh, and the background, that now we have this space. This space now becomes more prominent, okay, the space that is here. So that can only be achieved if we, if we have a backlight, and the backlight should light from behind. And of course, you can now actually see the outline of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the hair and all that because of the illumination that is coming from behind. If we were to switch off, for example, uh, the, the, the key light and just remain with the backlight, uh, you will find that uh, uh, our subject will appear like a, a silhouette because we have more light coming from, uh, from the background. So if I can dim that, okay. So I've 
turned off the key light and all that we have is the backlight okay and now you can see that the resulting uh, image is that uh, that shows our subject like, like a silhouette okay well, just like an outline of the shadow of our subject so if uh, actually if we had placed it right behind our subject then our subject will be totally dark and uh, will not be visible so uh, that is how uh, the backlight uh, functions uh, when you place the uh, the, the backlight uh, without any other light <clears throat> so my key light back on and now we have uh, the key light and the backlight so for now we can introduce the three uh, the, 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 the third uh, 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 lighting point and that is uh, uh, the fill light so if uh, we can uh, have the fill lights on and uh, we'll get to see so those are the fill lights now you can actually see that our subject is uh, all lit okay from all the directions because we have the backlight we have the key light and then we have the fill lights which are placed uh, around us here and they are they are helping us to add more inf uh, more, more light and also to kill the shadows so right now you can actually see that we do not have shadows around okay even when i walk around you can't see any any shadow because uh, that has been taken care of by the fill lights that we have uh, in this setup so uh, that is a, a quick demonstration of how lighting works now <clears throat> in this process it's all about lights camera and action now if we now go back to our screen, the multi-view screen, where we had our waveform monitor. You can actually see that the waveform monitor, that graph has risen, okay? It has risen. And it's all because now the different uh, uh, colors, lights, and all that, they are all there. And that's why we have, uh, we have uh, the multiple uh, ma 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 multiple graphs there so representing each of the colors that are getting into the camera so if I try and for example right now you can actually see what I'm doing is to dim the key light and as I dim the key light just observe uh, what happens with the wave uh, in that way for monitor so I am dimming now and you can actually see that the levels are going down. It's because I've reduced the amount of light. Okay, back to normal. Okay, so now it's all, uh, uh, I've increased the exposure uh, in that light. I'm reducing, I'm adding. So you can actually see the rise and the fall in the graph because of the amount of light that is available uh, in this particular set. So uh, that is just a very simple demonstration on uh, the importance of lighting and uh, uh, what we have uh, come to conclude here is that you must have you must have uh, you must have uh, light, uh, enough lighting in any given set so try and balance especially with the three-point lighting it's very very important three-point lighting helps us to achieve so many things uh, again we can have side lighting where instead of uh, maybe having 
uh, the light at the back, we can bring it to the side. So, my gaffer, please uh, switch off the fill lights. So, in this case, we can uh, bring this light to the side of our subject. So that now, we are lighting our subject from, from the side without any other light. We don't have the key light, and we don't have the backlight, and we don't have uh, the fill lights. So, I can try and uh, focus that on my subject. So, what we have here, if you look at uh, my camera here, what we have is uh, side lighting. Our subject is lit more from, from the side. Okay, so uh, this is side lighting. So you can have the frontal side lighting, which can be front from this angle, frontal side lighting. You can have uh, the back si side lighting. You can have uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the up side lighting and all that. So you can vary the angles of the lighting. And of course, this can give you, if uh, it's uh, in film or dramatic productions, it's going to give you, uh, uh, it's, or it's going to enable you uh, uh, achieve something that you want out of that particular scene. It's going to add that drama into the scene. And that is with the, the creative uh, lighting, that is where now you are applying the lights from different angles, from different directions, and you can actually even... Uh, uh, increase or reduce the intensity of that lighting. It's going to create a certain mood, a certain feel, and bring that into the, uh, the scene. And your audience will feel uh, that, they, uh, th that they are enjoying the scene because they feel that there is some involvement in terms of uh, the way you are applying the lighting. So uh, that now extends to uh, creative lighting, uh, which we employ in uh, film and dramatic productions. So, in this case, uh, we have come to the end of the lesson today on uh, issues to do with lighting. And uh, I hope that you have understood and that you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.